Wow, here we are again, Brother Peter, with tidbits from the Word. In the Christian area of being Christ-like, in Christendom, we'll call it, there is a thing called faith. Faith is what we have in God. Faith is where our trust comes from in the Lord. We're going to look at Psalm 11. In the Lord I put my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to yonder mountain? If you're not careful, you will put your faith down. This is in Psalm 11. If we go over for a second to Psalm 56 and verse 11, it said, In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid of what man can do to me. So we don't have to be afraid of what man or the devil can do to us. Because if we put our trust in God, he will take care of us. And so that's what we need to do. And by the way, this psalm is registered to the chief musician. A psalm of David. He was considered in his day the chief musician. He sang these signs. For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. Wow. That's those that live in darkness. They like to say, you watch that Christian there while he's in church. I'm going to let all the air out of his tires. Wow. Wow. And that's what they do. They shoot that arrow at you and they do something uh, for against you. If the fountains be destroyed, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And the devil has tried his best and is still trying to kill the fundamental churches in the United States of America. What is a fundamental church? I don't care what the name on the church is, if it's a church that's following what this Bible says and living by it, it's a fundamental church. It doesn't matter what the name on it is. If it's following this Bible, it's a fundamental church. The Lord is in His holy temple and the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold His eyelids. Try the children of men. God's saying, my eye is on the children of men. My eye is on those that say, I believe in Jesus Christ and I am going to follow him. His eye is on him. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. He hateth that one that is wicked, that hates him. And because they hate him, the hatred is universal. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. And this shall be the portion of their cup. Now we saw a literal, as we read in the book of Exodus, back Genesis, Exodus, second book in the Bible, we saw the literal uh, things God did to the Egyptian children. The ten plagues that God put on them. If that's not enough to prove to you that God is the God of heaven, He is the God of everything on the earth, if that doesn't prove to you that, then you have a problem. You, have, you need to be saved so you can get some confidence in God. If He could rain chunks of ice out of the sky that were on fire, you know that he's a God of heaven. Why were they on fire, by the way? Because we know the speed of them caused friction, and it was fire and ice. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. Those of you who are in a fundamental church, or those of you who live fundamentally, even if you're in a church that's not fundamental, God's eyes are upon you. He will bless you. He will, 
he will meet you in your time of persecution. Uh, chances are, as myself, uh, the majority of Christians today are not wealthy people. They have people like myself who live from day to day, week to week. And when uh, there's a shaking, then you, 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 you go without. But that doesn't shake you out of your place of comfort. It doesn't shake you out of your place of, of, of being able to worship the Lord and being able to be happy and being able to uh, enjoy God in spite of the fact probably some of the poorest people I know are some of the happiest people I know in the Spirit of God. And so in verse 12, chapter 12, we see a plea against the wicked. And again, it's by that chief musician, Shemitha, a psalm of David. And we went through that. That was said before in Psalm uh, number 5, I think. And so we find out that the help of the Lord is for the godly. And that man uh, ceases uh, for the faithful and fail from among the children of men. And so we see in verse 2, they speak vanity, everyone, with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. These are people who are not following God, but are claiming they are. And the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Verse 4, who has said with our tongues, we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? And they care not. They don't care about God. They just go ahead and run their mouth and do what they want. One day, that we will be judged. The Bible said, every single word that proceedeth of the mouth of man will be judged one day. How can you and I make that be a good judgment? By judging daily our words. Be careful how we talk. Be careful what we say. If we make an error during the day and say something we shouldn't have said, ask forgiveness at night. Get that wiped away so that we won't face it later on in life. How will you face it later on? You'll face it by a loss of reward. You can build up a thousand rewards and build up a thousand regrets and don't put the regrets under the blood of Jesus and lose your thousand rewards. So you need to keep a, a short account when it comes to those regrets for the oppressions of the poor, for the signing of the needy. For will I arise, saith the Lord, I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. That verse 5 is a safety verse. He uses the word safety. He said, I'm going to be your safety chain. I'm going to be your safety belt. I'm going to be the one taking care of you. Verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. You notice he said, of earth. We're on the earth. We're earthlings. We are earthly people. This Bible is written for earthly people. It's not written for those way out there in heavenly somewhere. This is written for you and I today, right now, that we should follow it. Verse 7, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them for this generation forever. Wow. From this generation on, those that I, God's, are perfect, will be kept forever. The wicked walk in every side, and when they violence men, are exalted. We are living in a day where violent men are exalted in their way. And we're going to call this 
uh, it. And this is uh, 11 and 12, those uh, two chapters in Psalms. And we'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.